Hey, Abe, I'm glad we are here to meet today. Uh, for everyone watching, this is Abe Greylog's Director of Professional Services Enablement, and I'm Jeff Darrington, Senior Technical Marketing Manager here at Greylog. And today we're going to be here to talk about this new RCE that just came out for Log4j. It appears it has major reach in organizations and in the internet, uh, in the connected applications on the internet. So Abe, what do you think? I think this uh, this vulnerability is a big one, Jeff. Thanks for inviting me. And this is uh, this one's a doozy. I think it's going to be kind of the same for those in the red team world. Something like SMB 0867, where it's just around for years. The long tail on now on that one is it's it still works today in a lot of environments. And I think I think Log4j is going to be like that in a lot of places. It's going to pop up in pen tests, and then after a few years, once most of it's been covered up, it's going to pop up in chains of pen tests and stuff like that. So I think it'll be around for quite a while. And uh, and yeah, it's a doozy, pretty trivial to use, and and in everything. Well, it's interesting we're talking about this. As we can see in the background, we have our login screen to Greylog. And um, it's clear we have an integration with Graynoise that can integrate with our logs and highlight some things here I think everyone should know if they don't know already. Um, it'd give us a quick synopsis of what you know with Graynoise. Sure. Um, when I was first asked, hey, you know, if you were to look for Log4j, how would you do it? This is exactly how I spun it up in this lab. And... What I'm using is, is a tool called Gray Noise. We have a really easy integration with it. It's in our data tables or lookups. I'll show you that in a second. But for now, what we've got is we've got the Gray Noise web page. And I wanted to show you what this looks like. If I go looking for something like Log4j, not even, a, not even paying attention to the banner at the bottom of the page showing me, but let's just say that wasn't there for now. I can go look at the tags and I can type something like Log4j. And this is what we're going to actually leverage in, in this little bit today. So I can see the log4j RCE attempt. I can see a long list of this threat intelligence source, uh, Gray Noise, who's a great threat intelligence feed. And one of the first places that I saw mentioned in an article about log4j, hey, look at the data analysis from Gray Noise. You can integrate a lookup table in Gray Log from Gray Noise, despite the fact that we don't always agree on the spelling of the word gray. But uh, you can integrate that with, with, a, with just your API key. So from them, you can grab these, these tags in your data, such as Apache Log4j RCE. They've even leveraged with benign or malicious. Pretty much everyone watching traffic from a firewall at scale needs some sort of a threat intelligence feed, and Graynoise is a, is a very great one. So if I'm looking up this, these tags, I can see a lot of data individually from the Graynoise website. And uh, really nicely laid out, this is a, a fantastic UI, but I've got a few different, uh, few different sets of data here. If I go back to my... If I go back to my gray log instance and I actually log in, and take a look and I'll show you how I leverage this in this in this lab environment here. So I have some firewall traffic being monitored. My first page is my indexing failures and I see none, which is fantastic. Let's take a look at the uh, the pipeline rules that we're using here in this lab. If I look at the manage the rules, I look at the log4j traffic page, traffic pipeline here. Hopefully you can read that. I'll even uh, I'll zoom it in a little bit so it's a little clearer to see. But uh, this rule here, when you're on the Abe net, which is my network, and there's been an external IP address lookup, such as going to gray noise, all I'm doing is looking inside the tags for the exact string, the name that they gave it. And then I'm giving it the, the, the an additional field, threat flag, Apache log4j. This way I can build kind of instances specific to this case and really start narrowing down the, the traffic that I'm looking at. What that looks like when I actually see some traffic, let's pull up a little search page, something that just kind of threw a couple of visualizations together. Log4j. And here it is. So I've got one, one in there right now, the threat flag log4j, just from, uh, just from trying around, trying it a couple of moments ago. So then in the last 15 minutes, but if I wanted to, I can even go ping that address. I'll ping it and cause some more traffic. So the firewall sees me hitting that, hitting that IP address with an actual valid tag. This one I happen to know is benign. This one I happen to know is not malicious, but, uh, but when I hit that and, uh, oh, if I was watching my logs live, I would have seen it change live. So there, I've got a second instance, a second sighting showing up and, uh, whatever other dashboard visualizations I wanted to put in here such as whether it's you know benign or malicious, color code it, where this came from, the like. I can see uh, however I want to build my table and visualize that information. So 
At this point here, I made the one rule, feel free to rewind, take the screenshot if you want. I'm sure we could follow it up in, uh, in written form for people to copy and paste. But for the most part, it's uh, uh, insert the lookup table, add that to it, and then search through those tags to find the tag that you're looking for. In this particular case, the R R log4j RC. That's Excellent. That. So you you covered off your your lookup table. Is there any other little small pieces here you'd have in configuration like the adapter? What how easy is it to set up? Setting up the adapter. Well, again, this is a uh, this is an integrated product. So when I go to the lookup tables, the uh, I've got my enterprise lookup here. I can I can show you what it looks like. This is the data that is returned from Gray Noise when I look that up. So I can see first scene, last scene, I can see all that same data and I can massage that into my messages however I want to. And uh, setting it up is absolutely as simple as creating adapter, gray noise, and giving it a name, ignoring the uh, red error I just got from my lab environment, giving it a name and uh, dropping in an API token. So it's as simple as giving it a name and putting in your API token. That's pretty sweet, that's pretty quick. Excellent. So for today, Abe, I guess we've just talked about something, you know, everybody wants to know in the, in the future, how you would look for this problem or look, look for this RCE in your network. Once you've got what you've here got shown and configured, pretty much you could search for this on a regular basis in your, in your logs and indicate where you might be vulnerable. That's exactly it, Jeff. So you can build your visualizations, however you want to see them and uh, away you go. This is uh, this is a pretty rinse, lather, repeat. Any of those tags that are available from the Thread Intel feed, I showed you gray noise, but there's uh, there's plenty of Thread Intel feeds out there that go nicely with log management solutions. So I know a really good log management solution. And uh, here's one really Excellent. good Thread Intel feed. Excellent. And you can take it down or up a notch by adding some alerts and notifications in there as well. Yep. Excellent. Abe, thanks for joining me today. Uh, this is really, really good. I'm hoping we can get people on board and get this intelligence in their gray log instances. Awesome. Thanks very much. All right. Have a good day. You too. Thanks. See ya.